President. Senator from Illinois. Mr. President, uh, I want to thank my colleagues, Senator Sinema and Senator Tillis, for their statements earlier on the floor on the issue of immigration. A number of us are coming to the floor to discuss it today. It's a sad day. It's sad because there are many people who were counting on this Congress to do something, who understood that we have an immigration system that is terribly broken and we're paying a heavy price for it. And there are many who are watching this proceeding today who are paying an even heavier price. If we do nothing to help those who are protected by DACA, if we do nothing to help the Dreamers, court decisions may preempt us and may force some of these people to face the reality that they can no longer legally work in America and they are subject to de deportation. Many of these young people, and I'll tell the story of one in just a moment, have spent their whole lives here in the United States. They've gone to our schools, they go to our churches, we see them at the high school football games, they work in the Dairy Queens, they're all over America because they're part of America. At least they think they are, but they're not. They're undocumented. Their parents brought them to this country when they were infants and toddlers and little kids. They grew up in this nation thinking they were part of it, and then there was that day of awakening when the parents finally sat down and said, we've got to tell you the truth. You're not here legally. These are dreamers, people that I've tried to help for over 20 years, over 20 years since I introduced the first Dream Act. And I wanted to help them now. I thought perhaps we could get something done, but we haven't been able to. And unfortunately today, it looks very, very unlikely that we will. But I hear in the comments of the senator from Arizona and the senator from North Carolina, the bottom line truth, any reasonable, factual discussion or debate on immigration not only deals with the dreamers and those who are here in undocumented status, but also has to deal with what's going on at our southern border. The senator from Arizona was correct. It is a humanitarian and security nightmare that is only getting worse. We're being flooded at the border by people who want to be in the United States, safely in the United States. I had an opportunity to meet some of those migrants who were bused to Chicago a few weeks ago and to sit down across the table from them and hear their stories. I tell you, I recommend that to all who are interested in this issue. Hear the real stories of desperation and danger that they faced in the countries that they came from and realize that their sentiment to be part of America, protected in America, have an opportunity in America, is the same sentiment that brought my grandmother to this country with my two-year-old mother and her sister and brother. I recall the stories. These are not people setting out to cheat some political system. These are people fighting for survival. Carlos, with his four-year-old daughter and his nursing infant and his wife, who spent four months in a journey from Venezuela to our border. In addition to that, indiv individuals named Maria, who is a college-educated individual in Caracas, who left because of fear of her life, came to the United States, and during her trek to this country, went through violent personal assault in Mexico. She broke down in front of us as she told us the story. These are real people, real human beings. But what are the bottom line principles that should guide us? I think there are at least three, maybe more, but the ones that come to my mind are this. We have to have an orderly process at our border. There has to be some system that monitors the number of people coming in and the circumstances that bring them here. That's number one. Number two, we should never knowingly allow anyone dangerous to come into this country. That's unequivocal. I hope that everyone agrees on that. And third, and this is the hardest part, we cannot accept at any given moment all of the people who want to come to America at that moment. We have to have an orderly, timely process that makes sense for America, that makes sense for our reputation as a humane nation, and moves us forward along the right track. I think of these dreamers because I come to this floor so many times, five different times I've called the DREAM Act for passage. Five different times I got a majority of vote on the floor. But in the Senate, as most people know, it takes 60 out of 100. And I couldn't get the 60 vote margin five different times. Years ago, 10 years ago, we had a Saturday morning vote. This gallery was filled with these young people. They were wearing caps and gowns to tell the story that they want to be graduates of schools high schools and colleges and be part of America's future. 
And when we lost that vote, didn't get our 60 votes, I joined with them at a church nearby, a Lutheran church, and there was a lot of tears being shed at that moment from me and from all of the others. I said to them at the time, I'm not going to give up on you. Don't give up on me. We can do this. And that has driven me ever since. And I've reached out in every direction that I can think of to try to find allies in this conversation who will sit down on a bipartisan basis, fix this broken immigration system. I want to thank the senator from Arizona for uh, taking the initiative on this issue, along with Senator Tillis. Uh, I believe that their proposal, though I don't agree with it all, uh, is the right starting point for the conversation and debate on a bipartisan basis. But the real starting point has to be the true stories of the people who are going to be affected by this. Let me tell you one as I have before. This is the 132nd time that I've taken to the floor of the Senate to tell the story of a dreamer. And this young man's name is Jose Flores Valor. Jose arrived in this country from Mexico when he was only 11 months old. And he grew up in my home state of Illinois, in DeKalb, Illinois. From a young age, he served as interpreter for his family at their medical appointments. It was through these experiences, watching doctors care for and provide support to his family, that his passion for health care bloomed. In high school, Jose enrolled in a certified nursing assistant course and his goal was to eventually be a doctor. It was not until he was 16 when his classmates were getting driver's licenses and making their decisions about colleges that Jose realized he was undocumented. Even though he was accepted at, to the University of Illinois at Chicago, his legal status meant he didn't qualify for any federal government assistance or scholarships, and he could not afford to stay beyond the first semester. But he didn't let that obstacle stop him. Jose sought other avenues for pursuing a career in healthcare and recently earned an Associate of Science degree from Kishwaukee College in Malta, Illinois. On top of busy academic schedule, Jose worked with a travel nursing agency as a certified nursing assistant. In this role, he traveled to six different states, worked in rehab centers, nursing homes, hospitals, and provided care to some of our most vulnerable citizens. When the pandemic hit, Jose was deployed across the country to meet urgent health care needs. His work took him far from home, which meant he was unable to be by his grandfather's side when his grandfather passed away from COVID. It was one of the many sacrifices Jose made to pursue his passion for serving our nation. Today, Jose has earned a full scholarship at Loyola University in Chicago to complete his pre-medical student studies and obtain a bachelor's degree. Madam President, let me take a moment and say a kind word about Loyola University in Chicago. There are many great higher education institutions in my state and in our nation, but they have gone out of their way to really show that they care for people like Jose. It was their Stritch College of Medicine which opened competition for the first time to DACA students all over the United States. They didn't give them a quota or say that there are a certain number that would be accepted, but they said, you can compete with everybody else for admission. For many of these DACA students in Illinois and outside, it was the first chance they ever had to apply to a medical school. As a result, more than 25 students were accepted by Loyola Stritch College of Medicine. And here they have accepted with full scholarship, Jose Valor, to complete his pre-med studies on the way to a bachelor's degree. He wants to obviously attend medical school and begin his journey toward being a doctor plans one day to open a clinic to help the uninsured and low-income people. He considers DACA, quote, his opportunity to become a contributing member of society. A simple question. Is America better or worse for having Jose living among us? Would we be better off if we just deported him back to Mexico? He came here before he was one year old. He didn't know a thing about the journey or where his parents were taking him. He's done everything right since volunteering to help with health care, risking his own life during the COVID-19 crisis to help other people, doing the hard work that many people would turn away from, and now trying to finish college with a pre-med degree so that he can become a medical professional in America. Do we need him? I need him. In Chicago, I can think of places around our state where we're waiting for people with nursing backgrounds and medical backgrounds to step up and to treat American people 
One of the hospitals in Chicago came to see me last week. It struggles. It's in a tough neighborhood. And they said to me, the administrator of the hospital, we almost closed down one of our departments. But luckily, luckily, we were able to bring in 30 Filipino nurses to augment our staff and to keep that department open. 30 immigrant Filipino nurses keeping a department open at a major hospital in the city of Chicago. That story is repeated everywhere. And for people who say we need no more immigrants, we just don't need them, they're wrong. We need Jose. We need those nurses. We need people who will make this a better nation. But we have to do our work here. We have to deal not only with their situation, the undocumented situation, but also with border security. The senator from Arizona was correct. It is a humanitarian and security challenge. And now it may have to wait for another day. We can't finish it this week. But when we do return to it, let's do it with an open mind and an open heart. Let's understand that we can make this a better, safer nation, a nation of immigrants who make us a better place. And we can have order at the border as well. That is the only thing that gives us any chance to, to thrive as an American nation into the future. I look forward to working with the senators. I thank them for their initiative. And I'll do all that I can to help them. Madam President, I yield the floor.